So I'm here with XCon Cody again, second video like we promised. Brilliant YouTube channel, recommend you go over to it. Asking Cody today, what happens to sex offenders in the UK prison system? So what have you experienced, Cody? Right, what it is, from a young age, I was actually sexually abused by someone that lived local to my mum and my stepdad. So, like any prisoner, um, you, you hold certain grudges and, like I say, three things you don't want to be in prison. Uh, grass, a uh, paedophile or a rapist. Um, and when I was in strangers and stuff, right, they're housed on their own wing. Um, you don't come into contact with them in any which way. Even on visits, we sat separately, they were to the left. Um, but then when I went to Forest Bank Prison, which is a private prison um, in Salford, run by Sodexo Justice Services, there's that many sex offenders in that prison that they overspill into general population and they run a regime called DNU, which stands for Do Not Unlock. And what it means in layman's terms is before the prisoners get out, they're out for half an hour in the morning before the prisoners are out. And then when the prisoners get out on social in the evening, they get locked up, then they get out and they've got half an hour to get a shower, get on the phone and the usual stuff um, but yeah there was actually a sex offender on my last stretch because I was a cleaner uh, we was obviously privy to the fact that he was DNUs he can't run around the wing calling them paedophiles or nonces as we call them uh, or bacons we call them in the British bacons. system bacons yeah that's the thing that we use um, and what it was this kid was getting other prisoners found out and he was terrorising them behind his door he got unlocked for a visit uh, and what he did was he jumped up on the bars. There was no netting. For those that don't know, between the like the landings, there's um, there's normally mesh netting, metal mesh, mesh like netting, so you don't like jump over. There wasn't any uh, in Forest Bank. There isn't any. So between the twos and the ones, there's nothing. So if you fall, you fall. Anyway, the kid jumped up, uh, threw himself over. Uh, the officers tried to grab him. It was literally, if you can imagine doing a handstand upside down with someone grabbing the back of your legs but over the, this, you're over the other side of the bars. Gravity took hold, the kid fell head first, and I was standing there watching him. He fell head first, he, he's just indentation in his skull, bleeding from the ears. Um, unfortunately, he survived. Um, you said then, you were terrorising, that's why he was doing that. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you mean by that, terrorising? Terrorising, so, sorry, yeah, ter that was like terminology in, in Manchester or the UK for terrorising someone, abusing them, trying to squirt urine through the side of the door, trying to... Because the wing that we used to be on used to be a medical wing, the, um, the, the windows used to actually slide. Yeah. That was the first time I've been on a wing like that. Um, and he was trying to, there's a thing called a shit parcel. You shit in a shit piece parcel. of paper. Yeah. Shit parcel? Shit or piss on a piece of, shit on a piece of paper or um, toilet roll oh. and just like go to the door and just throw it at the prison. Right. Trying to just, and another thing as well with sex offenders in prison and uh, like I say, I'm not even embarrassed about this, but this is a reality. Um, because we knew who he was, they used to eat before the other prisoners. Now, we used to corrupt their food. Now, like I say, just you're talking everything from semen, um, whether that be in mashed potato, oh, spit, pubes, hell. hot dogs in, hot dogs being put in the prison pocket. The prison pocket, for those that don't know, is the anal cavity, arse, or whatever you want to dress it up as. So, like, you've got hot dogs going up prisoners' asses, passing it round and stuff. And, like I say, it's not, it's, it's a small thing, but we was in a position where we had it quite comfortable on the wing and we didn't want to like lose that privilege and that job. Yeah. So we'd either pay other people to target certain prisoners or yeah. we'd just corrupt their food. We, I remember once they we was on a wing, uh, there was two black lads that we'd seen earlier, right? But they, we thought they'd been shipped down to the main, like we didn't know what they was in for at yeah. the time. Um, they was actually classed as general population prisoners, which means that they, they was mixing in with normal prisoners on the wing. Yeah. And then they came back and we said, oh, what are you doing back? He said, oh, we've been caught. I said, what are you on trial for? So uh, me and about four of the cleaners were standing there and he said, oh, for rape. So I was like, my brain's telling me to, to just kick the shit out of this kid. And then I'm thinking, you know what, you're getting out soon. So I walked into the service, slammed the door. Uh, and then one of the other lads come in right behind me and he goes, I've just said to him now, so what's happened is you both tag team this girl. Yeah, this girl was 13 years old. Oh. The, the illegal age of consent in the UK, guys, is 16 years old. Um, and like I say, so they was open, they must have thought they was housed with, they must have thought we were sex offenders and they must have thought that we was from the same cloth as them, but we wasn't. Uh, and that they literally was like admitted to tag teaming two big black guys tag teaming uh, a 13 year old girl, oh. I think she's 12 or 13, but to tag team her in that way guys, like you say, the, the mental scarring that comes with that, she'll have that for life, um, they was running trial, they just admitted to us that they just, they raped her, 
uh, and they took turns like spit roasting her. But they're running trial, so yeah. they're obviously saying one thing to the judge and uh, to their to, to their defence team, and they're saying a very different thing to us on the wing, more or less bragging about yeah. what they've done. Yeah. And what happened to them then in the end? Uh, they they ended up fucking. Uh, they ended up getting put on protection. Um, we again we just corrupt the food in every which way possible. Yeah. Uh, we 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 put together, we clubbed together. We was just like some some of the cleaners were doing bits and pieces reference like selling bits of this and that. Yeah. So we, we clubbed together with a, a, a nice little package of spice, which is a synthetic cannabis, uh, for those that don't know. For, it used to be as a, known as a legal high. Mm -hmm. It's now known as a new psychoactive substance. Uh, we clubbed together um, and we just paid one of the lads to, to target him and stuff and shit past him and throw piss at him and try to attack him. And yeah. we, the lad was even willing to put himself on protection so that he could become a do not unlock so that when he got out he'd be a little locked at the same time as them prisoners wow, so wow. he could target them but the lads ended up getting shipped uh, eventually the sex offenders wing must have had a someone must have got out or two people must have gone out uh, and they was then fed in yeah. to the sex offenders wing which is known as a they're known as vulnerable prisoners vulnerable in the sense that because of the nature of their offense they will be targeted but in the uk um you don't just get people that are rapists and sex offenders on the protection. You can get former prison officers, police officers, former gang members, uh, debt heads. Uh, debt heads can run a thing on a normal wing called uh, OP, Own Protection. Uh, but sometimes they just choose to go with VP now. The thing is we're going for VP, uh, vulnerable prisoners. Uh, like I say, you're housed mainly predominantly with sex offenders, but you do get your exceptions. Um, there's a lot of shame with that. Who wants to be housed? or padded up with a rapist or a paedophile that's harboring images of a six-year-old girl or something, do you know what I mean? And the thing is for me, I think all offenders can be rehabilitated, but I don't think sex offenders can, uh, namely paedophiles. I think if you go to prison attracted to a man, you leave attracted to men. If you go to prison attracted to females, you leave sexually attracted to females. If you go to prison sexually attracted to children, you will leave sexually attracted to children. And I think the longer you're inside, because if you're inside a UK prison, and you want to buy pornography, you can buy pornography magazines. Now, I was like the porn baron on the wing. I had, I had a TV with a DVD slot with a, it looked like a Ministry of Sound music CD, and it was just porn, absolutely top to bottom porn. Uh, I'd have porn magazines, but these sex offenders, unless they've got mobile phones, they can't access these indecent images that they want to access in prison of children. So I believe that they're sexual attraction to children only intensifies the longer they're in prison.